okay so a very good evening students a very good evening uh, welcome back to this image based question uh, discussion part 1 so what we will be doing we will be taking the different image based questions which have been asked and nowadays it has been seen that it, there is a trend you know, on image based questions and these are the simple questions which are asked the only thing we have to be very you know uh, it's important for us to comprehend we understand we have seen those images if we have, if we have seen those images it becomes easy for all of all of us to understand and to comprehend and to answer based on the questions they have asked so let's start let's not waste time okay so the first question if you see first question is uh, order for the margin of error in the graph given is no so there has been a image uh, there is a image which shows that uh, what is the margin of error they are asking so if you see there are three graphs on this 3 2 and 1 so the sample size of the third graph if you i can show you the sample size of the third graph is 600 the sample size of the second graph is 800 and the sample size for the first graph is 1000 so this information they have given now they are just asking you what is the order for the margin of error is it 3 means the third one greater than second greater than 1 or 3 greater than 1 greater than 2 or 1 greater than 2 greater than 3 or 1 is equal to 2 or is equal to 3 now whenever you have such question students always and they are asking you margin of error means error standard error they are trying to understand so even if suppose uh you you, have, you don't have much information about that so once you one thing the gold standard which you should always remember is as the sample size increases the error margin of error or standard error decreases so if i say uh now if you understand that this statement which i said that once as you increase the sample size as you increase the sample size the standard error will come down so if you have for example the third graph if you see the sample size is 600 the second one has 800 and the first one has 1000 so if you see the samples are increasing so what will happen the error will be less in one then in two and then in three so maximum error will be seen in third then in second and then in one so if i go with the options given below so this is a this is b this is c this is d so the answer will be error will be more in the third one then in the second one and then in the one so the A standard error will be less in one. So I'll go with the answer A. Okay. Yeah. So you know the error, as I said, it's the amount of random sampling error in a survey result. So as you all know, standard error of mean when we calculate it is uh, standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. So it is SD divided by square root of sample size. so as the sample number increases students your standard error will come down so can i say margin of error is inversely related to sample size so if your sample size increases your margin of error will decrease if your sample size is less your error standard error will be more so i hope if you go back to the question it makes it clear that the sample size was less in the third followed by the second and one so sample size was less here in the third graph then in the second one it was slightly more and one it was more so the error will be less in one then in two and then in three so based on that the options which we select is 3 2 and 1 okay i hope it is clear okay let's take the second questions now in image based question it is important to you know take a proper understand take pro, uh, go through the image properly 
And if you see this question, students, it is talking about observe the following curves. No? They are telling you to observe the following curves. What will happen to sensitivity and specificity if curves changes from blue to red? Okay. So they are asking you what will happen to sensitivity and specificity if the curve changes from blue to red. So first thing, this is the blue part, blue curve. And this is the red one. Okay. So this is blue. This is your red part. Right. So there the question is asking you what will happen to the sensitivity and specificity if the curve changes from blue to red. So the curve blue is intersecting here. And if the blue curve changes to red curve, the intersection point is this. So what will happen? What will happen to the sensitivity and specificity? Both sensitivity and specificity will increase. Both sensitivity and specificity will decrease. Sensitivity increases and specificity decreases. Sensitivity decreases and specificity decreases. So now it is very important to understand, uh, you know, the pattern of whenever such questions come, uh, whenever there is a you know image base and that also when there is you know the curves has been represented and they're asking you about sensitivity and specificity it is very important for us to understand whenever such intersections happen so how to what should be our approach to solve such questions students now let's see how it should be solved and it is very easy you know it's very easy don't worry about this First of all, the answer to this question is, they are saying that, okay, the sensitivity increases and specificity increases. Oh. But I'm not interested in the answer. I am only interested, what should be your approach to add to answer or to reach to a conclusion that your answer is A. And it is very simple student. Just give me one minute, I'll explain. First of all, just take this picture. No, this is this is the type of you know, the enlarged version of the image. Now you just I am just giving an example of patient without cancer, patient with cancer. Now you see here patient without cancer. No? So can I say this as they are not diseased? Okay. Now patients with cancer, can I say they are diseased? Simple. No. Okay. So this is the this is the cutoff line. Now there are two approaches to that. This first approach, and please understand this. If you understand properly, what will happen? All questions related to such image-based questions, it will be easy for you to answer. One way of answering this question is a simple you know trick, which I'll tell you. And one the second way is based on the explanation. Now you see, first what the trick I am saying, so we need to identify which is true negative, which is true positive, which is false negative, which is false. It is mentioned here, but since it is mentioned, we can say, but if it is not mentioned, how do we correlate and how do we say that which is true negative, which is true positive, which is false negative, which is false negative. Now let's try to understand what the trick I am saying. Suppose this is the cutoff, this is the line 0.5, this line. So what is shown this side student, this side what you see, it is patient without cancer and what I have written, not disease. So can I say this side is negative? I am talking about the trick. This side what you are seeing students, patient with cancer. What is the meaning of this? Means can I say they are diseased, which I have already written. Can I say that they are positive? No, in terms of positive and negative. Now one line always remember, the negative portion of the graph means this portion, whole portion, please always whatever they are asking, suppose they will ask you this, what is this? So please there will be always negative, you cannot think of positive, don't think anything positive. So if you take this line, the this portion of entire graph, whether it is the green one or red one, always think of negative. So, and if you take this part of the graph, 
So this is towards positive side, disease side always take positive into consideration. This side always take negative into consideration. Now let's try to understand. So I said this side you have to put negative, this side you have to put positive. Okay, so these are negatives. So if I start from here, so this clearly I can write, okay, this is true negative. No? Okay, so this is true negative. What I will write about this part, this, this portion, as I said, don't use your brain, just think, okay, as I have said already, that negative will be written. Since true negative you have already written, can I write it as false negative? Okay, so if what you see, uh, the portion of the graph which is on this side is always negative, either true negative or false negative. Now come to this side. This side is positive, I have already said, so you have to always write positive, true positive or false positive. Now please write, since it starts from here, so this will be definitely true positive. And this portion which is as it is on this side, put blindly it is false positive because already you have mentioned true positive, so put false positive. So what happened, what I did students, this is a trick, so the area of the graph on this side put negative, true negative or false negative, area on this side of the graph put true positive or false positive. So this is one way of answering, simple, so whenever you see such graph, first thing which comes in our mind, okay, without disease, with the disease, okay, without disease I have to put negative, so I put true negative, I put false negative. With this is positive, true positive, false positive. I have put it. So this is one way of answering. The second way, which is the, the rational way or scientific way of explaining this, that can be also exp no, explained clearly. Now you see, what happens students? This is patient without disease. No? They are not suffering from disease. Okay, so it starts from here. Okay, true negative. Okay, obviously true negative, true negative, they are not suffering from disease till this point. Now the moment this line comes here, you know, so what happened? This is the cutoff point. The moment this line, till here it is true negative. The moment this line comes this side, ideally it should have been negative. But since it is coming to this part of the graph and this part of the graph, so it can be false positive no because though it is negative but since it is coming to the positive side so it becomes false positive okay now come to this side it's true positive true positive true positive no problem come till here true positive students till here there is no problem the moment it crosses this line now this red comes to the green patient without cancer zone okay Already they are diseased, they are red, no, they are diseased. They should have been positive, but just because it has crossed this line, so we classify that, oh no, you are normal. So I say that it is false negative, which is perfect, that is the way it goes. So this is this means correct way of explaining you can do. Trick also I have explained you. Negative, always think of negative, true negative, false negative. Positive, always think of true positive, false positive. And if you, this is also one of way, one way of understanding this and the, other, and the other, the scientific way which I have explained just now. Now come to the question student. What was the question they said? So if you take the blue where they are intersecting here, you no. Know, so as I said, this is healthy. So this side of the graph is true negative and false negative this side of the graph is true positive and false positive i have already said we don't we don't have to use anything just simple now what happened this so your if i can uh, look, this portion blue where the intersection is blue so this portion if i can highlight this is what this is your false negative and this is your true negative Similarly, student, this portion is your false positive and this is your true positive. Now, what the question is saying, this cutoff intersection point has come down. So, your this portion is less now, this portion is less. So, what is the meaning? Your false negative and false positive are less. 
when your false positive and false negative are less your specificity and sensitivity will increase definitely so b goes with the answer a so the moment we have understood let's take the bigger graph this one and i'll try to you know just give a moment i'll try to erase this understand yes this much will work yeah so what was the question saying if you take in this this was the intersection point the second intersection point happens students here no if you remember the question so first was here second was at the lower point the moment it goes like this so your this part and this part are less means your false negative and false positive are less the moment your false negative and false positive are less definitely your I mean sensitivity and specificity will increase this was the question okay okay similar question students try to answer this you know and if you have understood that this will also become easy now read the question a gynecology oncology research institute isolates a potential tumor marker for endometrial cancer a large multi centric study is then performed to evaluate serum levels of the tumor marker in women with and without endometrial cancer the following curves are generated using the result of the study clinical researcher decide to use the tumor antigen to develop a confirmatory test for patient with suspect endometrial cancer during preliminary design of the test the cut off point for positive negative result is set at point a so the cut off point is at a if the cut off point is moved from a to b the specificity of the test will change in which of the following ways so they are saying students the cut off point first was at a if the cut if the cut off point so this is healthy this is uh, this side is diseased it is given in the graph so if this changes to b so this cut off point comes here so what do you think what will happen to the specificity means what will happen to the uh, true negative this is the question they are asking so how do you approach again students don't think that there is b no assume there is a so what do you think as you as i have said healthy side disease side so on the healthy side you will have true negative false negative i have already said on the disease side you will have true positive and false positive okay so this line is here students this line is here okay so this is your true negative okay so this part the small part is your false negative as i said all negative this side this is your true positive and this will be your false positive simple now what happens this line this was the initial question now the line comes from here to here now this is the line here now you have to think this way now so this and this crosses this line comes here no so this line crosses here so this intersect this has come here so what do you think what will happen to your specificity means the intersection point is this line no this line so you see this portion which is and this portion which is so this portion okay let me ex let me first of all just give me one minute so that it becomes easier so so let's take the question has asked you from the line has come from a to b so let's take this line okay this line so there is an intersection so this side as i said it is true negative this is true positive 
this line, this uh, uh, the true negative line intersects the line here. So this part, as I said, it falls under the disease part. So it becomes false positive. And this line crosses this part. So this whole big part becomes, you know what? This becomes uh, false negative. Okay. So I am right, true negative, false negative, true positive, false positive. Now, so this much portion of the area is your true negative. So that when the line has changed from A to B, so your true negative area has increased because your false positive area is very less. So what can you say about specificity? It increased. So the answer is C. Okay. I hope this is clear students. And just to, uh, you know, just to make it more clear, the only thing which I am requesting you all is if this is the small, no, and this is the line curve, this is this, these are the type of questions, when similar type of question was asked. This is negative side, this is positive side. Please ensure this side of the graph, either it comes from this side or this side, don't worry. Put true negative, false negative. This side of the graph, put true positive, false positive. Now label it. This is your true negative. This is your false negative. This is your true positive. This is your false positive. If you know this, then the line goes this side, this side. Accordingly, you can see whether true or negative will increase, decrease, whether true positive will increase or decrease. So two questions, if you say, it will become easier to answer the question. This type of questions become easier only when you know what, which part of the graph is true negative, which part of the graph is false negative, which part of the graph is true positive, which part of the graph is false positive. So if you see what the best easiest way on the negative side, you know, all negatives. On the positive side, all positive. And then you start uh, you know, interpreting the graph, it becomes easy. Okay, great. Let's take the next question. The following box plot shows the distribution of three set of data around the mean. What is the correct sequence if inference from this box plot has to be has to be inferred? So, what are the, what is the correct sequence? So, you have one, two, three. So, is one a normal distribution? Two a positive skew, three negative skew. So this is either A or B if you take one normal distribution, two negative skewed, three positive skewed. Or you, are, you go with C, negative skewed is the first one, positive skewed is the second one, normal distribution is the third one. And D if you go positive skewed is the first one, normal distribution is the second and negative skewed is the third. So if just you have to know, uh, based on this, first of all let me tell you this is box and whisker plot. No? So based on this, what do you think? What is 1? Is it normal distribution? Positive skew, negative skew. What is 2 and what is 3? Now, the answer to this question is B. Okay. Now, let me explain. Please try to concentrate on this. And first of all, when you see this, this is the box and whisker plot. So let's start from the smallest value. So this line, uh, this line is a whisker. So this is your smallest value. And this box is taken as quartile box, you see. It's a quartile. And then you have the highest value, the greatest value. So you have the greatest value, you have the smallest value. The difference between the greatest value and the smallest value happens to be range, okay. Now, so we have started from the smallest value. When we see the quartile, so this box which is this part this line is the first quartile okay in the middle line the middle most middle line obviously it is the second quartile or you can say median not a problem both is same so this is your second quartile or median and this is your third quartile okay so this is the way this is the different types of different parts of box and whisker plot so it's just, you start with the smallest value greatest value, you have the box, first quartile, median, third quartile, okay. Now, let's see, let's see what is happening here. 
Student, this is your smallest value, this is your largest value, this is your box and the line has divided into, this is the line. So can I say this is median? Can I say this is Q1? Can I say this is Q3? Now if I, if I say Q3 minus Q2 means, Q2 means this is Q2, median is equal to Q2. Can I say Q3 minus Q2, which is this part of the graph, is equal to Q2 minus Q1, this part of the graph, it is same. So if your Q3 minus Q2 is equal to Q2 minus Q1, this is normally distributed. Now come to the second one. Again students put Q1, Q2 and Q3. What do you see? This part of the graph is more than this part of the graph. So can I say Q3 minus Q2 is greater than Q2 minus Q1? So this part of the graph is greater than this part of the graph. If such thing happens, so this is called positive skew. Now come to the negative skew. Again, this is Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3. You can see it is quite evident this part of the graph is less than this part of the graph. So can I say Q3 minus Q2 is less than Q2 minus Q1? So this is your negative skew. Okay. So this is the way we have to interpret it. Now come to the question. Now students, so this is the smallest value. This is the largest value. Let me write here Q1, Q2, Q3. Similarly write here also Q1, Q2, Q3, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Now the one graph, the first one, it looks that Q2 is in between. So this is the median. So you can easily say that Q3 minus Q2 is equal to Q2 minus Q1. So 1 is normal distributed. So okay, 1 is normal distributed. Now come to the second one. What do you see? Q3 minus Q2 is less than Q2 minus Q1 because this is big. This area is big. So Q3 minus Q2 is less than Q2 minus Q1. So can you say this as negatively distributed? No. So negative skewed. So I mentioned negative skewed. The third one students, now you can say Q3 minus Q2 is greater than Q2 minus Q1. So this is what? Positive skewed. So, we'll, so 1 is normal distribution, 2 is negative skewed and third is positive skewed. Very simple. The only thing we have to understand Let's plot Q3, Q2, Q1 and try to you know, interpret the graph and based on our interpretation it becomes quite easy to answer such questions. Okay. And this, this slide, this was the self-explanatory slide students so that it becomes easy for you and I thought it's, it's, I should uh, show before explaining there because this makes clear. No? By seeing I can say this is Q3 this is Q2, oh sorry, Q2, this is Q1. So I can say this is equal to this. So let's go to normal distribution. Again, if we put Q3, Q2, Q1, so this area is more than this. So if Q3 minus Q2 is greater than Q2 minus Q1, this is positive skew. Similarly, this is Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3, so this area is less than this. So it becomes negative skew. Okay. So whenever you have such questions, just try to interpret it in this way. You will never be wrong students. Okay. Great. Now let's take the next question. That a study was conducted to find out number of positive lymph nodes in a population of breast cancer patients who underwent axillary dissection. A graph was plotted between the number and the frequency of positive nodes as below. Which of the following is the correct statement? A means you have the graph, it's given, so what is A, what is B, what is C? What do you think? A is mode, B is median, C is mean, or A is mode, B is mean, C is median, or A is median, B is mode, C is mean, or A is mean, B is median, C is mode. And thankfully the, the image also gives that this is positive skew. 
Now, if you understand positive skew, you will be able to answer this question. So, what do you think? What is A? What is B? And what is C? Just think. Okay, let's take this. So, the answer to this question, students, is A. Now, we will go with answer A. Now, let's try to understand this. Okay. Okay. So, these two pictures, this picture was there, it is right skew, positive skewness, this is negative skewness, left skew. So, if you see the tail, no? the tail in positive skewness is towards, not tight, it is wrongly written, it is right. No? So, tail is towards right, negative skew, the tail is towards left. Okay. Second difference is, large number of scores and small number of high values. No? There is large number of scores and small number of high values. Here just it is opposite in left skewness. It is large number of high scores and small number of low values. The, in right skew, the mean is maximum, which was the question. And in left skew, mode has the highest value. You can see mode has the highest value. Okay. Now, mean is greater than median which is greater than mode in right skew mean is greater than median which is greater than mode but in left skew mode is greater than median which is greater than mean now you can question me you can ask me okay this okay this is fine this looks fine but can we have a better understanding to this now students what you do i'll just give you an example now hypothetical example let's take 49 50, 51. Okay. If you add this number, it becomes 150. No. If you take average of this, it becomes 50. No. So can I say mean is equal to 50? If I tell you to calculate median, it will also come around 50, the middlemost part. So n plus 1 by 2, so 3 plus 1, 4, so it will be. Two second number, so this will be your median. Why mean median is is and this is and you don't have any more because no number is repeating. So mean is fifty, median is also fifty. Hmm. If if you see the data, the numbers, the numbers are uniformly distributed: 49, 50, 51. Now what I tell you, please add a number called sixty. The moment you add 60 students to 49, 50 and 51, it becomes 210 now total. Now if you divide by 4, it becomes 520, no, 1, 2, 52.5, something around 52. No? So your mean becomes now 52.5. Now go to median. Median it will be, you know, 4 plus 1, 5, 2.5. So, it will be average of 50 and 51, so it will be 50.5. Now, the moment I added 60 to this number, what happened student? That 60 is a positive outlier. It is not uniform, in the num it's not normally distributed. Because the normal distribution was 49, 50, 51. The next would have been 52. But what I did, I added a positive outlier which is 60. The moment I added 60 to that, it that 60 has dragged the mean on the higher end side. So your mean becomes 52.5, median becomes 50. So what have you, this positive outlier has dragged the mean on the higher end side. So this is a perfect example of positive skewness. So your <coughs> mean will be high, followed by median and then followed by mode. So this is positive skewness. Can we take for negative uh, skewness the same, same way example? Let's take 49, 50, 51. These three numbers when we take, your mean will be 50, your median will be also 50. Now what you do, you add a negative outlier called 40. The moment you add 40 to this, it becomes 190. And if you divide by 4, it becomes students 4, 4 are 16. 330 no for 47 point something 47 to 48 no? so this is your what is this this is your mean now if you take the median 
So it will be 2.5, 4950, 99, so it will be 49.5. So your median is 49.5, your mean is 47.5. Now you see what happened. The moment you added a negative outlier, which is not normally distributed, Normally distributed, if would have if we would have put the value, it would have been 48. But what we have done, we have put a value called 40, which is negative outline. Now this 40 drags the mean on the lower end side. So you see, we have mean followed by median followed by mode. So mean is lower, then median is median is slightly higher than mode. So this is the simplest way of understanding skewness. If you have a positive outlier, it will drag the mean on the higher end side, positive skewness. If you have a negative outlier, it will drag the mean on the lower end side. So that is called negative skewness or left skew. Okay. I hope this is clear, students. Okay. Take this. A scatter diagram was plotted as shown below to study the relationship between two quantitative variables. What is correct interpretation? If you see this graph, so x-axis and y-axis, the graph is plotted. What do you think? Is there a correlation between two variables and the Pearson coefficient is 1? There is a correlation between two variables and the Pearson coefficient is minus 1. There is no linear correlation and there is no association between two variables. So based on this question, if you get and if you see the graph, so what, what do you think? Is there a correlation? positive correlation, negative correlation, anything you think or there is a no key linear correlation or no association. So if I see the graph, my first impression to by seeing the graph is that there is no linear correlation between two variables. So I, I should go with the answer C. Okay. Now let me explain this. So what happened? When you are plotting the graph x and y axis, if you see that, let me go to the graph, to, cert, to this point there was a linear correlation, see, as the x axis data moves, it was increasing on the y axis also. But after a certain point, as the x axis is moving on this side, y axis is coming down. This is the simple interpretation of the graph. So what happens? The graph illustrates a non-linear relationship. Why? When I say non-linear relationship, because y increases as x only up to a point till the mid path. After that, there is a reverse direction as you have as I have shown in the graph. So when you have such information in the graph, it is not linear. So the best answer to this question is non-linear relationship. Okay. Just few more examples, student. This is linear. As the this as x axis increases, y is also increasing. This is also linear. No, in one pattern. But you see this not a pattern. This not a pattern. No linear. It's non-linear. Non-linear. This is also non-linear. Okay. Okay. Just it had Pearson product correlation coefficient just to make you. It ranges between minus one to plus one. Let's take from zero students. If we move towards positive side, so we are moving from weak to strong. So plus sign, positive correlation. As we move towards, for example, 0.5 positive correlation, 0.1 perfect positive correlation. Similarly, if we go on the left hand side, no, from weak to strong, minus 0.5 negative correlation, minus one, it is perfect negative correlation. So this is about Pearson's you know, a correlation coefficient. This helps us to understand whether it is a positive correlation, perfect positive correlation, negative correlation, perfect negative correlation. One more way of the simple way of understanding, simple way of understanding is perfect positive correlation. No, how do you interpret it? Rise in one variable lead to proportionate rise in other variable. Perfect negative, the same way, rise in one variable lead to proportionate fall in other just opposite moderate positive correlation there is rise in one variable which leads to rise in other but not as the perfect one moderate negative same on the negative side rise in one variable lead to fall in other 
no correlation there is no correlation between the two variables and there can be also times when we do a false correlation there is no correlation unnecessary we are trying to make a correlation so no pattern has been observed but deliberately we are trying to do so that is false correlation or spurious correlation okay now on the similar note you can see this a study was conducted to see the effect of pulse oximeter reading in units with and without micropore now the plot between two values was made as shown in the figure below what conclusion can be drawn from the plot there is a positive correlation with constant 3% increase in y axis value there is a constant negative correlation there is a constant positive correlation between two variables there is correlation if you see the graph is moving this way so it is moving in this way and you can think students what is the answer the answer as we have discussed just now there is a constant positive correlation between two variables so image based questions students it is important to interpret it and we have to, if you see many of the questions was very much related to statistics screening but it is important that we understand properly and uh, you know we answer the questions properly okay okay so i what i'll do i'll stop here students and thank you for you know uh, going through this topic it will definitely help uh, help you i'll be taking another session where you know i'll be taking questions other image based questions there are more image based questions and trust me if you go through all these things if you revise once or twice image based questions are no it's, 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 if i can say it is scoring uh, means it helps you to score it's crystal clear you are seeing the image what is the answer you have to answer it so it becomes easy okay with that note students thank you very much take care bye bye see you in the next next session thank you take care bye bye